We're currently free, completely non-profit and available on demand from alchemyradio.net and iTunes. And our listenership is increasing every day. However, as the show rapidly increases in popularity, so do costs, and it's becoming more and more expensive to prepare, produce and host, so your help is needed. We rely on donations to keep the show in its current free and advertising-free format, and are extremely grateful indeed for any help you can offer. We put no fixed cost on your donations and every little help, so for example, if you could spare even the price of a cup of coffee every month, this will go a long, long way towards keeping us afloat. Our PayPal donate button is on the website and your support and assistance is hugely appreciated. Also, check out our new Twitter account. It's twitter.com forward slash alchemy radio. Get following and interacting with us with all your feedback, guest suggestions and other input. We'd love to hear from you there. So on to the show. This week's guest is British author and speaker David Icke. He's been on the show before. He's written over 20 books and travelled to over 55 countries. His books reveal how a hidden hand guides world-changing events like the attacks of 9-11, world wars and the current strife in the Middle East. As part of a mass mind manipulation technique, he has dubbed Problem Reaction Solution. While being controversial and often heavily attacked, David has continued with his unremitting investigation into previously taboo subject areas. David, you're very welcome back to Alchemy Radio, a year to the day by complete coincidence since we last spoke on the show. How are you? I'm I'm good, mate, actually. Yeah, good. Synchronicity, that's what it is. Well, that's what it's all about, really. You've been extremely busy in the last year. Obviously, Wembley was a huge success for you. Tell us a little bit about that first and what the the post-Wembley fallout was like. Well, it was, you know, what's happening... um, in the last few years and happening in the last few months and the last few weeks quickening and quickening is you you're getting these points on the journey that are significant steps forward and to get 6,000 people uh, listening to this information at the Wembley Arena for 10 hours um, was extraordinary really when when you look at it from that perspective but the information is so powerful when it's put together that it holds your attention because of course it's not just about one subject Mm. it's about multiple subjects multiple pieces in the puzzle being explained and then put into their context with the other pieces so that's why it takes so long and that's why it's so the information is so riveting and so that that was um a, a major step a major moment on the journey which was like a a confirmation of of how the interest in this information is expanding and you know the, the what you call the fallout was uh, that everything increased after that um whether it was the website or books or whatever everything increased and mm. the interest in the work um increased but there are only stages on the journey um the journey needs to keep going on and Keats need to get uh, ever more effective and um, and more expansive. And so when I had a, an experience uh, with a mainstream journalist in uh, the earlier part of this year, about uh, late April, May, um, I realized that there was no point in trying to get uh, information to the, to the, the greater public yeah. uh, through mainstream journalism it's a waste waste of space it was just a you know i just they're going through the motions when it comes to journalism and um you know the system is a programming machine so it starts with the education system that is not there to inform young people it is there to program them with a sense of perception for um the rest of their lives and so out of that system come people that go on to be doctors and so they become uh, doctors uh, from the perspective that the education system has always already programmed them to see the world. Mm -hmm. They become scientists, same, and they become journalists, overwhelmingly, with honorable exceptions, same. By the time they enter that profession, they've been through the education system, usually to some level into university and what what have you. And by that time, their view of the world is largely set by the repetition of the system telling them what that set perception should be. And so when you are talking to a mainstream journalist in that mode, which most of them are, you might as well be talking to a wall because they're simply not 
computing what you're saying because their sense of reality is so different to yours. Yeah. So it's very difficult to have any communication. And, and of course, w people like to believe that you know, what they believe is true, and what they've got it right, when we're all on a journey of constantly expanding our understanding of what is, um, and at no point have anyone got it in totality. But um, the, uh, the, the, they like to think that they've got it right, and thus anyone that's saying something very different to their worldview and their view of reality must therefore have it wrong. This is, how, this is the dynamic of any interview with mainstream media. And I, I had another one. It was with a, a journalist from the Sunday Times. I had the misfortune who, of reading it. <laughs> yeah, who came to write uh, uh, pages and pages, they told me, in their Sunday magazine, and had not even read a single page of any of my books. So th that was a, 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 well, it was good, really. I can only thank him for, 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 for being so close-minded, because it brought me into a point that said, we got to do something else. Yeah. And at the same time, um, uh, I, I, I came across something else that came up around the same time which started me thinking well why don't we why don't we bypass the mainstream media and and go direct to the public through some kind of broadcasting operation and so the people's voice was born and um we have uh, been working uh, particularly sean my my partner in this the, who's the head producer and and uh People are working with him, like Deanna, who's over from Australia, doing the logistics and the organization and stuff. The, 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 the workload has been fantastic, but we have got to a point now where uh, we're still on course to go um, on air with this in uh, November. And it's a, a global internet TV and radio station, which is uh, has the vision of... Uh, communicating this information from all around the world 24 hours a day. Whether we'll manage that on day one, we'll see. But something significant will happen on day one and, and, and we'll build from there if necessary. But um, that's, that's another massive, massive stage on this journey because, you know, we could only raise £300,000 in an appeal to get the station on air because we'd reached the point in this awakening where enough people wanted it and knew it was necessary. And, you know, we went for it when we you know, were putting the idea together in, in the way that you jump off the edge of a cliff. I mean, you know, there is so many, so many things to do, so much to do, so many challenges to make it happen, so much work and all the rest of it. But question, uh, are we going to do it or are we not going to do it? Well, another question. Is it necessary? Well, yes. Well, the question's no longer, are we going to do it or not going to do it then? The question is, how are we going to do it? And so we're pushing on and meeting the challenges, and uh, we, we will be going to air in November. And I expect it to build and build and build until it is a, a global phenomenon, because we are uh, going uncensored apart from the laws of libel, yep. and we are seeking to give people direct access to information not through the mainstream media censors or, or or what have you and also giving people direct uh connection to people through the station so uh that's a, a, a massive step forward um we're going to launch a new website as well in um in a few days next week probably uh which is again dropped into this same period which is added to the work but it's it's necessary mm. uh we're going to launch another wembley arena event in um september which is going to be in october 2014 and um i've got a a massive book out the perception deception in uh, late October, uh, early November, it's at the printers now, which is uh, nearly a thousand pages with nearly a thousand images and, and a, a life's work put together. Um, so it, it is uh, an amazingly exciting time, John, uh, on so many levels that uh, is coming to fruition in so many areas. Uh, and it's going to be, um, you know, a roller coaster and it's, uh, but a good one. Well, absolutely. Uh, not, not like it has in the past when you've been you know, trying to get anyone to listen, they wouldn't want to know. Now it's coping with the interest. And you say it's extremely exciting, which it is. It's also possibly the most pertinent time that it could possibly take place at because look at the world around us. We all know what's happening or most people know what's happening who would be certainly listening to this show anyway. 
And there is a huge sense of frustration with a lot of people because they don't seem to have an outlet and they're bombarded daily by, be it mainstream media or friends or family or whatever it might be. For in, in the years since we last spoke, David, I've noticed a massive quickening in the awakening of people around me. We, I spoke at the time to you about how slowly but surely people seem to be copying on that all wasn't what it seems. And there seemed to be just a higher vibration emerging gradually over time. Well, over the last year, I've noticed just in my direct peer group and the people around me and family and friends, the, the quickening has been dramatic to the point where I think if something like the People's Voice had launched this time last year, I think there would have been a little bit of, oh yeah, well that sounds pretty cool and it would have been pushed maybe into the entertainment corner for people when they wanted to look at, in inverted commas, conspiracy theory for half an hour a week. Whereas I think now the number of people since I've started speaking about it and through your website and, and the various other outlets, when they've become aware of the people's voice and what it is, there is a genuine excitement and a genuine, it's almost like there's been a call to arms and people are responding to that. And for the first time in history, that's a positive thing as opposed to a negative thing. I'm really, really encouraged by it. Well, it's interesting. You know, I have got the feeling from many people in their incredible support and interest uh, for the people's voice, almost a feeling of this is the last chess corral in the sense that the awakening is moving, the quickening is moving, there's no doubt about it. What I called 25 years ago, the truth vibrations that was coming yeah. and was going to wake people up and, and, and open their minds to, to perceptions of self in the world, a reality that, that they never would have even dreamed they would have. This is happening, and it's happening on a bigger and bigger and bigger scale. But at the same time, that which is wishing to suppress that awakening and suppress people um, is also moving uh, quickly. And, and so uh, the attempt is to lock down all sources of alternative information. You know, they're looking at ways to censor the internet and all that stuff. And so we need to get this uh, up and running and we need to, to get it into a situation. And we will, we will, mm. where they dare not take it down. Um, and we um, are at a point now where the people's voice, the concept of it, is absolutely vital that this takes off and this uh, succeeds in the way it is going to succeed. Because, you know, so many different areas of the free flow of information are being uh, locked down. Uh, as I can say, they're looking for ways to censor the in internet, or we must have filters to save people, uh, children from child pornography when, you know, a lot of the people involved in that stuff are actually pedophiles uh, that are seeking to do this. Um, but, uh, and, and also you've got the Leveson uh, inquiry and all that stuff, which is which is to to lock down um, uh, the uh, and censor and uh, shall we say seriously discourage the mainstream media from doing the modicum of journalism that it still does. And then you've got people like Bradley Manning um, and you've got uh, Snowden, um, and they are they're being uh, portrayed as uh, basically. This is what happens to you if you if you take us on. This is what happens to you if you expose us and all that stuff. Um, and and so the people's voice is 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 the the vehicle to cut. It's going to cut through that, and um, it's absolutely vital. And uh, it's uh, something that must succeed and will succeed. But it's not just about conspiracy. It's about suppressed information across mm -hmm. the whole spectrum of society. It's about giving people in music and bands the opportunity and poets and comedians the opportunity to have a public um, uh, profile and stage for their talent that the mainstream media won't give them and the corporations won't give them. It's, 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 it's going to have a massive presence on the station in terms of alternative health and exposing the, uh, the the big pharmaceutical and big biotech uh, manipulations and GMO and all that stuff, but also positively, how do we overcome that? How do we improve our, uh, our health and, and, and looking at all these alternative ways to keep ourselves healthy that uh, Big Pharma and its um, Codex Alimentarius, this uh, food code as it's called, uh, which is seeking to impose global regulation to uh, stop people getting access to to uh, food uh, supplements and nut nutrition and all that stuff. Um, we will will be exposing all that as well. But but the whole spectrum of of subjects that you can think of um, 
we will be will be covering and we're going to have live programs um out of the uk we're going to have what what's that going to be that's going to be six hours of live programming a day out of the uk mm-hmm. we're going to have um uh, hours of programming live news programs out of um uh, america it's going to come out of los angeles with input every day from luke uh, rudkowski in um, new york Excellent. same at the weekends uh, and then locking and filling in between those those uh, live programs is going to and, and other live programs are, are going to be uh, lots of different subjects um, that everything you can think of um, and, and also um, programs about the awakening and how we can more efficiently open our minds to the greater consciousness all these things we're going to have uh, at the moment we're planning three uh, global mass meditations a day 15 minutes a time um, to get people to uh, come together in in uh, at the energetic level, and of course you do that, and the the total is massively more powerful than the the parts um, uh, individually. So uh, all these things are, are what we're planning, and uh, like I say, it's a massive job of work. But my goodness me, what satisfaction! And of course, it's a non-profit making operation. Every penny that comes in goes into the station. And as you say, it is a massive undertaking, but it's a powerful undertaking as well. And what it's doing, to my mind, is harnessing the power of people and the vibrational, and you mentioned it there, the energetic power of people, for the first time in a positive way. We're so used to negative energies being harnessed by the powers that be. And this is really flipping it on its head. And I think, I have to say, the name is very clever, The People's Voice, because you touched on internet suppression there and censorship and stuff. I mean... It's going to be very difficult to censor something that's called the people's voice. And if people get it into their heads that this is their voice, they're not going to be too pleased about that being silenced or potentially that's, silenced. That, I, I, honestly, John, I, I can see the headline. Uh, government seeks to censor the people's voice. I mean, the, <laughs> the power of that statement in, in, in the consciousness of people. Uh, funnily enough, I was sitting in this very chair uh, when I was getting the idea for this. And I was, as I sat here, all that was going around my head one morning was the people's voice, the people's voice, the people's voice, repeating. Yeah. And I thought, I'll have that one. That's good. I like that. So that's where it came about. It just came into my head out of nowhere. Brilliant. Well, I think it's, um, it's a stroke of inspiration there in terms of that because uh, it's about power. Everything is about power and how power is perceived and what we do with our own power, how we choose to give it away or how we choose to retain it for ourselves. And I'm very interested in the, uh, the mass meditation um, that you spoke about there because I haven't, I haven't heard of anything done on that scale. And I do think I, I'm a firm believer. It's not even a case of belief. I mean, who believes in anything really? But the, the power of meditation is there for all to see should they choose to look at it. And it's been certainly a very, uh, very good aid for me in my life over the last couple of years. And I think, as you said, that more than the sum of its parts, if people can get together and raise their vibration collectively, that's going to be an unstoppable force because look at the sheer numbers that we have versus those that seek to suppress. It's, it's incredible. The odds are stacked in our favor should we manage to actually mobilize. Well, I, I've said many times over the years, there's more than 7 billion in the target population. Uh, compared with that, there's a relative handful in full knowledge of what they're doing. I think I see a way out of this, <laughs> um, uh, but it's the divide and rule of the target population mm. that allows the few to manipulate the many. They set the target population at war with itself. I, I mean, it's classically happening in um, in Syria at the moment. It's happened in Libya. This all manipulation of divide and rule, which then allows the problem to be given a solution of send the boys into, you know, a pepper bomb uh, the population of the country and take it over uh so you know the d- 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 divide and rule is, a, is a, a, a massive part of this so we have to come together and one of the things i want to do in the people's voice is is have it as a vehicle for bringing people together um you know i don't care okay you want to believe in islam you want to believe in judaism you want to believe in christianity you want to believe in um uh you know be an atheist or whatever well be my guest as long as you're not imposing on anyone else Mm. but hold on a second there is a common theme here this is not a conspiracy to enslave uh muslim people or jewish people or atheists or christians it's 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 
it's a conspiracy to enslave all of us. So wouldn't it be a good idea if we just put down our beliefs for a, a second, kept them to ourselves, and then come together on what we agree on and what, what affects us all and all of our children and grandchildren and, and instead of being divided and ruled by this uh, uh, nonsensical uh, belief system uh, that, uh, or prison that people live in. Uh, but in terms of, of meditation and coming together where consciousness connects across the world, you've only got to look at the um the graphs uh, of what happened on 911 when th there are um there is technology around the world which is measuring changes in the earth's uh, energy field the earth's magnetic field and at the time that 911 was happening and that global focus of attention attention is this is it energy go uh, flows where attention uh, or energy flows where attention goes um there was this enormous spike in uh, the Earth's uh, energetic field in terms of something impacting upon it. Mm. And that was caused by the global attention, negative in this, in this sense, shocking in this sense, emotional shock, that was actually focused uh, uh, um, on, on that time when the, the world was becoming aware that 9-11 was unfolding. Now, if you take the focus of attention of a mass global meditation and we'll build it as the numbers build the numbers will build and build and build and build as we go along then we're going to be in a situation where we're going to be impacting upon the energy field the energy sea in which we're all interacting because this is so so vital to to understand to to get deep in the rabbit hole to see where this and how this conspiracy operates because the world that we're experiencing it seems to be solid but it's not it's just a holographic illusion um, and if you look at um, holograms the holograms you buy in the shops um, what what uh, how they're made is you have a, a waveform um, information field which carries the information and the laser is fired at that information field, and from that, through that laser, this three-dimensional, apparently three-dimensional form, whatever has been photographed, mm. appears. And the, the, the best of them can look as solid as you and me, but it's just a projection. Now, um, the hologram itself that you're looking at is only a, an expression of the base state of it of that form and that's the uh, waveform information construct now it's the same with this reality we are we are looking at the holographic projection but wh what is this is being projected from it are information fields and um, energetic fields on one level electromagnetic fields and therefore what um, the conspiracy is doing at the deepest level is manipulating that waveform level of this reality. So then it must project into what we perceive as the physical world, actually the holographic world, as changes in society, attitudes, emotional states, whatever. Um, and so if we're going to, uh, we're going to get to the the cause rather than the symptom then we have to connect into that energetic field and change it with a different perception with a different energetic state and you know alternative health talks about mainstream medicine quite rightly and it says mainstream medicine only deals with the symptom not the cause yeah. but when you're trying to find answers to the world uh, in the holographic realm, in the five sense realm, well, that's like a doctor giving you a pill for a headache to take the pain away briefly, but the cause of the headache still remains the same, and so the headache will return. Um, and so when we run around 
Um, you know, it's like, you know, we've got to stockpile weapons. We've got to do this. We've got to th- No, because that's trying to change the hologram within the hologram, and the hologram is just a projection, and thus you cannot change the hologram at the level of the hologram. You've got to change it at the information field level from which the hologram is projected. And through mass meditation, we can uh, tune into those energetic levels through the collective power of mass consciousness and put a different energy, a different perception, a different uh, information source into that field and make it accessible to everybody who wants to tune into it. Because um, we're, having, we're having a chat now um, on a particular station, on a particular um you know communication medium yeah but what is happening is as i'm talking my vocal cords are vibrating an information field which represents what i'm saying same with you same with everybody that talks about this stuff uh, all over the world now on these different outlets mm. and that when when it's uh, broadcast uh, through the through the internet or in in whatever form it's broadcast, that broadcast is um, impacting that information upon the collective field, and has the potential, therefore, to uh, influence uh, people and awaken them to concepts and things that they've never thought about before, who've not even heard the program. You know, because this energy sea that we live in is actually the stadium in which this whole thing is played out. And one of the ways that they're manipulating this field uh, for the, uh, shall we say, not the benefit of humanity Mm. is by bombarding it and flooding it with radiation. So um, when you... um, in, in this uh, new book, The Perception Deception, I go into this in great detail. Oh, my goodness, it's nearly a thousand pages. I go into almost everything in great detail. But th- in this particular area, and when you see the figures for the increase in radiation in our energetic environment in the last 50 years, it is absolutely staggering from all these various uh, technological sources. And um, as, as one scientist said, uh, we, we, we are taking part in an experiment in human existence, basically, without knowing what the outcome is, because we have never experienced this level of radiation in the environment before. And then you look at Fukushima, yeah. something I've been saying since pretty much it's, it, it exploded, that actually that was not an accident, but by design. And... It has flooded both the ocean and the uh, Earth's uh, energetic field atmosphere with unprecedented, in our known human history anyway, unprecedented levels of radiation that is still going on to this day. And, you know, websites like mine have been bashing out for all this period since Fukushima happened. This is... uh, it's fundamentally serious, and this radiation is not lessening. It's actually uh, increasing. This, this week, in the last 10 days, at last, even the mainstream media has had to acknowledge that actually uh, the radiation coming out from Fukushima all this time later is, is, uh, is massive and uh, potentially catastrophic. So, uh, and, and when uh, I met a lady in, um, in the 1990s, about 1993, lady called Kitty Little. She was an, uh, an Oxford Don. She was, um, you know, quite elderly at the time. Yeah. But she was a researcher into uh, British intelligence and its manipulations and what have you, as well as being, um, you know, very closely connected to Oxford University. And in her, uh, uh, her academic career, etc., she had um, worked at a high level in uh, the government's uh, nuclear uh, in uh, you know um, organizations mm-hmm. like Harwell and places like that, and she told me from the amalgamation of her experience in the nuclear field and conspiracy research that uh, the nuclear power was actually 
uh, from the start uh, created and uh, promoted and brought into existence as a power source by the House of Rothschild. And, and you know, the House of Rothschild do nothing at the, at the, the core level, not everyone that's called Rothschild. I'm talking about the core level. And many of the Rothschilds are not actually called Rothschild. You know, there are so many uh, people, uh, shall we, of the bloodline that are not, uh, not called Rothschild. It's unbelievable when you do the research. But um, at that core level, they will not do anything that isn't advancing this uh, agenda for um, the Orwellian global state. So what I'm saying is if they're doing that in terms of, and they've done that in terms of nuclear power, that is fundamentally important to this agenda. And when you think about it, uh, John, you, you, we're talking about Fukushima. How many Fukushimas are there all over the world? Yeah. How many are there in, 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 in our countries? How many, how many are there in America? Uh, and or, uh, what have you. Everyone is, 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 a, has a, is a potential Fukushima. So, you know, this um, manipulation of the human energy field is very, 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 uh, crucial to understanding what's going on and when um, you know I've talked over the years that the, uh, the the goal on one level fundamental goal on one level is to pull people into low vibrational emotional states like fear and worry and depression and anxiety and and, 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 and anger and, and, and conflict um, well that's also an energy which is pouring into this collective field. And when you're filling this collective field with low vibrational emotional energy, um, a, a density, when people say, oh, I feel so heavy today, you know. Uh, yes, because your energy field is vibrating slowly, uh, comparatively slowly, thus it, you're, you feel he heavy. But this... Um, in the same way that I'm, I was talking a, a few minutes ago about when we do an interview, we're putting this information into that field and therefore people can be affected by that information. They don't even listen to the program. So all this low vibrational emotional energy that is pouring into the, um, into the energy field can affect and does affect Sig uh, more than significantly, fundamentally, uh, people who are connected to that field, i.e. humanity as a whole, to be pulled into that low vibrational um, state of density, which pulls you into the five senses and pulls you out of, of the of more awakened consciousness. And when you look at the effect of this manufactured economic crash worldwide, John, not least in, in Ireland, yeah. um, to say uh, the least, it's uh, generated and continues to generate phenomenal amounts of low vibrational emotional energy from the fear and the worry and all the rest of it and the consequences of, of what that has brought to people. So, you know, th but this is a, what we're talking about now is something that in the arena of conspiracy research is hardly, hardly not talked about at all, but needs to be because it's okay talking about banking scams and, and political scams, and I do massively, uh, and there, it's important to do so, but this is, this is, this is where the whole thing's being um, orchestrated from. I like your analogy of alternative medicine versus a big pharma treating the symptom rather than the actual cause, because I think one of the big distractions for people, particularly in the realm of, say, conspiracy research or, or this kind of thing, is they are distracted by the symptoms and they don't necessarily realise that there is a root cause. And that's one of the reasons that initially I was attracted to your work and your, your books, because it really tied things together in a way and it gave us all the different pieces of the jigsaw and then compiled the jigsaw for us as opposed to just looking at one or two different kind of isolated elements and I think it all comes down to energy everything we are energy everything around us is energy and it's how that energy is manipulated and the key for us as a collective is to divert that energy in a positive sense to raise our vibration as opposed to the low vibrations that so many people are currently experiencing I always love the old phrase that my mum used to say to me to, to rise above if something went on in school, for example, or just rise above it. And at the time when I was younger, I never understood that phrase. I thought, no, well, I just want to hit your man a smack or um, I, I want to fight back or whatever it might be. But as time goes on, um, I suppose what is time? But as, as my life goes on, as it currently is, um, 
I often think that that phrase rise above us, there's a deeper meaning to it because essentially it's about raising your vibration so that the symptom, i.e. the fight in the schoolyard, is no longer the focus. And that just disappears if you can rise to a higher level. And I think in a sense, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what you're talking about with the mass meditation side of things. And I think the people's voice can be the conduit for that for the first time, certainly that I'm aware of, because this hasn't been done before. And, and, and it's, it's time has come at, at the perfect time. I mean, mm. the, the synchronicity of it, uh, it's a wave. It's just a wave that says, my time has come. Let's go. Uh, it, it, you know, it's interesting what you're talking about because, you know, when, when you, you, you come from this perspective of the, the, the basic uh, form is energy and what we call form or the physical is mm. a projection of that information field. Um, it means, if you're talking about frequency and, and, and vibration, it means that if you vibrationally are not touchable within the energetic field by that which is seeking to manipulate you, mm -hmm. in other words, it's on a low vibration and you're on a higher vibration. Yeah. When those states are projected into the holographic form, i.e. the world that we're experiencing, they can't touch you here either. You know, people have said to me, why are you still alive? Why, do, why haven't they killed you? And, and you know, I, it's, not, it's not arrogance and it's not, you know, fantasy, I tell you. And I've, I've said all through these years the same answer, because they can't. Mm. And it's the same with all of us. You know, this is not me, Buddha, sitting cross-legged on the mountain. I'm above everybody. Uh, no, of course not. But it, it's like um, anyone, anyone can get into a state of awareness which is of a higher vibration than that which is seeking to control us and manipulate us. And if, if they can't touch you in the energetic realm, they can't touch her in the holographic realm because one is just a projection of the other yeah. and 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 you know this is why you know the, the alternative media i mean people say it's the, the alternative media they talk about that but actually the alternative media is an absolutely enormous spectrum it goes from people and uh, writings etc that are almost imperceptible from the mainstream media right across to those of us who are questioning every aspect of human perception and human society um, and so the mainstream media is not one thing it's just a name for this vast spectrum of uh, research and uh, perception and a great band of that spectrum is actually still in the five senses in terms of its perception of reality mm. and thus it has intellectually it has um, seen that there is manipulation going on it's seen that there's a, a manipulation to to give more and more power to fewer and fewer people to to crush the majority economically and in all these other ways and to manipulate wars of conquest. It's seen that and rightly seen that and, and rightly communicates that. But its, it's point of perception is, in, in America particularly, is either religious or it's taken mainstream science as its arbiter of reality and what is and isn't what's possible and impossible. And this is why people like me who have who are challenging everything and questioning everything, um, I am seen as crazy and, and ridiculous by most of the alternative media in the same way as I am by the mainstream because basically those two groups are coming from the same perspective of reality. Yeah. Um, and if the alternative media is going to move through this and see what is the totality of what we're dealing with, rather than, again, the symptoms, the, the manipulation of the banking system is a symptom. 
it, it, it's a means to an end. It's not the um, it's not the cause in and of itself. It is an expression of that which is causing it, and 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 all these other things that are going on. Uh, but if you have a religious belief system, and the information that people like me are putting out is if what we're saying is true, the religious belief system can't be true, then we are dismissed, not through evidence, not through research, but because if he's right, then my religious belief system can't be. And you know, I've been on um, programs and there's been a, a, a phone in, and, and or I've been interviewed sometimes on a Christian station in America, and they're less interested in the information I've researched than do you believe in Jesus, you know? And then, you, and then you've got um, those that uh, come from the, you know, mainstream scientific kind of uh, view of the world in the, in the alternative media, and they dismiss what I'm saying, and people like me are saying, because it doesn't fit with mainstream science, um, which is a Stone Age nonsense, most of it anyway, song sheet science, I call it. Um, and and therefore, they only go so far, and they won't keep going. And you know, I think it's a a real form of of, of you know arrogance, really, and certainly naivety, to believe that here we are in this density, um, and somehow in the totality of forever, we can suss everything we need to know. So it's between it's between the covers of this book, it's between the covers of that book. I'm right, my book's right, not your your book's not right, my book's right, and all that stuff. Or that mainstream science, which not too long ago thought this uh, galaxy was the only one that existed, um, was uh, not that long ago either, um, that it's, it is the arbiter of truth, knowledge, and, and all that stuff. I mean... Uh, the the um, Greek philosopher Socrates is supposed to have said, wisdom is knowing how little we know. That's a wonderful phrase, whether he said it or not. Yeah. Um, wisdom is knowing how little we know. Once you, you, you come from that perspective, your mind is constantly open to all possibility. Not to believe everything just because it, you, it's told to you or you come across it. No, but you don't dismiss it by reflex action just because it's different to what mainstream society and your upbringing has told you or the professor has told you is the truth or is possible and and what i think needs to happen and i do go into this in in the perception deception because i think it's important the alternative arena that is that is seeking to uncover what is going on and do something about it really does need to 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 take the chill pill and um open its mind to all possibility and not dismiss it by reflex action because what is happening it's 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 funny how how, how these things uh, work what is happening and has happened some considerable for some considerable time now is that m great swathes and increasingly great swathes of the public have actually gone beyond the mainstream media they know more about the world than the mainstream media because of of, of the other um sources of information that they've had access to so this journalist who's been to oxford university and oh he's the bbc something bloody correspondent um he's he's speaking from his point of view of intellectual oh yes he's the bbc and people watching it in increasingly large numbers are going He's talking bollocks. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And they know he is. And where I'm going with this is what I'm seeing, John, is that as this awakening goes on and on and on, uh, and, and of course, you don't awaken, you begin the process of awakening, and you awaken and you awaken and you awaken and awaken, and you, get, you expand and expand and expand your level of awareness. Um, so it's 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 a journey, and and how quickly you expand is simply a choice of 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 how much you're going to let the program go or not. But what I'm seeing is, as this is happening, increasingly great swathes of the alternative media is going through the same process, where more and more people are going beyond where it's at. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it too. And 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 it's almost now, and this is what the people's voice, my goodness me, is all about. Is making this a people um, 
driven uh, awakening by by go, getting information directly to the public and not only that but being at peace with allowing all views of possibility to be communicated without um, people doing it thinking or fearing they have to be defensive because I, I know from, from long experience in the mainstream media when you go onto a program in the mainstream to talk about the things that I do, um, immediately, you know, the, the, the guy, uh, I mean, the, the way you're handling this interview is absolutely the opposite of what you get in the mainstream media. Um, by now, I would have been interrupted loads and loads of times because the, the interviewer thinks that the program is about him yeah. and not about giving the public information, the viewer information, the listener information for which they make their own mind up. Yes, he should ask questions that he thinks the public would want to ask, Absolutely. But at least give the person a chance to speak. Mm. And what tends to happen is you go on and suddenly you're, you're, you're almost in a war. Um, and, and you go into a, a point where you, you, you're being it's demanded that you defend your position, not like explain your position, but defend it. They ask you a question, you get halfway through the first sentence and bang, they're in. Um, and, and if you're not confident in yourself, then you can you can get your your confidence slaughtered in a, in a situation like that. Mm. So what what the people's voice is going to be about is allowing people to come on, whether they're members of the public uh, uh, communicating directly to the station, or whether they are people that come on again, members of the public, we all are, who have researched certain subjects that seem on on one level far out to mainstream, and they're going to be allowed to speak. They're going to be allowed to explain themselves. It doesn't mean that, that, that you know, People's Voice programs are going to say, well, um, we're not going to question you and see, see if what you're saying stands up. The, absolutely. But it will be intelligent questioning, respectful. It will not be, um, uh, you know, ridicule and seeking to uh, build the image of the, of the interviewer rather than respect the right of the interviewee to, to speak their truth. So, it's going to be a very different environment for people to have the ability to speak um, uh, rather than anything that they've, they've had in the mainstream. I think it's going to be entirely refreshing. And I think that perspective is one that has been sorely lacking for, well, as long as I can certainly remember in the mainstream. I remember, again, going back to when I was younger. When I was growing up and there'd be something on the TV and I'd be sitting watching with my family. The big the big show in Ireland is called The Late Late Show, apparently the longest running um, Ch Ch Gay Ch Byrne, Ch right? That's right, yeah. Gay Byrne, yeah. who has since, um, since departed the show and I think there have been two other presenters since. But that's still running donkeys years later. And I remember it was almost like a, a ritual in Ireland. Everybody huddled around the TV set uh, on a Friday night and watched The Late Late Show. But I remember when Gay Byrne, who to my mind was a very good interviewer, um, and he was somebody who certainly pushed a lot of uh, a lot of stuff out into the open, be it religion or whatever else it might be, and was responsible, I think, for um, highlighting a lot of a lot of the shite that went on in Ireland um, to do with, especially the religious orders and, and what else was going on. But since then, since Gay Byrne departed, and he was by no means perfect. None of us are. It's amazing. I remember observing how the cult of celebrity took over with regard to who filled his shoes. And it's the same with any show that exists um, pretty much in the mainstream. It's all about who's going to be the next host and what can they bring to the table. It's not about what, what guests can be brought to the table and can be constructively interviewed. It's about the cult of personality of the host. And it's completely wrong. And as somebody who has a lot of experience in radio myself, both through music broadcasting and now through Alchemy Radio... It just, it wouldn't sit well with me. Uh, there, there would be no point in you coming on to chat to me and not getting to chat or having to consistently argue or defend your point because I think the interviewer's, interviewer's job is never to attack. Yes, you can critique or discuss, but that's a completely different thing to attacking. And it's almost like the, the default position for so many in the mainstream media is to attack, 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 unless they have a nice cushy number with an interviewee who is, I suppose, of the same mindset or paradigm as them. And th that's going to be completely different with the people's voice. And it, that's so exciting for me as somebody who's going to be a part of it. I'm, I'm really encouraged by it. I think it's going to yeah, be so it, refreshing. It, 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 it's, it's great to have you part of it. Um, but, I mean, I, I very rarely, but sometimes flick through the television channels 
and I, I come across something called the Jeremy Kyle Show. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> right. Well, that is absolutely an extreme example of how the show is about the bloke and not about the people on the program. Mm. It's just a vehicle for him uh, from the, what I've seen of it here and there. And, and it, it's uh, basically exploitation of people. Um, and and this, this is where, where it's gone. Uh, I mean, you know, you try having a rational conversation with Jeremy Kyle in Jeremy Kyle show mode and you'll get half a sentence out and he'll be in because it's all about him. Mm. Uh, and th this is the way it, it, it's gone. And, you know, we all know uh, we've had experiences of people who we might be in a pub or something and we start up a conversation with someone and they suddenly start to tell you stories about their lives and about their experiences. And they're absolutely riveting. And all those people are out there and they've got such a contribution to make with their experience, with their knowledge, with their experiences. Mm. Um, and yet they never get a vehicle to do that. Well, that's what I want the people's voice to be. Um, I want to unlock or provide, not me, but the, provide the, the platform to unlock all this creativity. This is why we've got programs featuring uh, bands and musicians and, and poets and artists. We've got a, a program called The People's Art, which is all about this. There's a, a number of programs I've got in, in this uh, area. The, the question is, c can we go with them all from the start? Because we're going to need a heck of a lot of editors to do this. Um, but I've got a program uh, which, I call, which I'm calling The People's Program, which is people making documentaries. Right. You know, and um, I've got another one called The People's Video, which is shorter videos that people have made on various subjects because you know you go on the internet and you go on youtube and you see these brilliant videos of five ten minutes you, you sometimes see a brilliant documentary of like an hour hour and a half which have been done with no budget off, off people's own bat and it's absolutely brilliant better yeah. than anything you see in the mainstream media in terms of information and and they get a few hundred uh, maybe a few thousand here or there you know watches well we want to give that a, a, a much bigger audience. Uh, so I've got another one, a program that, uh, or actually not, might be a program, it might be just dropped in through the day, which I'm calling the People Speak. And that is giving people the opportunity, uh, you know, in, the, in their own home or wherever they want to do it, just to speak to a camera for, you know, up to five minutes and just say what they like. Brilliant. Talk about their life, talk about their problems, talk about problems they've had and how they overcome them, talk about their, their opinion of what's going on in the world. And then there's the people's art, which is um, Neil Haig, the guy who does the art for my books. Uh, he, uh, he's going to front that and it's uh, going to feature, you know, the, the artistic creativity of people. We're going to have... Uh, we're going to have it on the program and we're also going to feature it on the website so people can, you know, have it in, in still form and they can sit there and look at it in, in detail for as long as they want. And, and all these things um, uh, I have in mind to break the stranglehold on the communication of information and the expression of creativity that the mainstream media has imposed on human, humanity. And it has been a complete imposition. And the sad fact of it up to now is that people have literally, they've decided to run with it. I mean, they, virtual reality, as you speak about a lot, that's essentially what so many people have been living. But uh, we can transcend that. And it's just great that there's going to be a vehicle. And I mean, I keep harping on about this, but a vehicle for something completely different that can totally bypass the nonsense and the shite that we have been force fed for so long. And I think it removes the excuse for a lot of people as well. And because we all make excuses from time to time about various things. But I, I've noticed, um, not so much now, but certainly over the last couple of years, a lot of people would make excuses and they'd say, look, well, I'm bogged down with, with daily life. I don't have time to go to the library or I don't have time to go and research A, B, C and D on the Internet. Right. And it's the, it's the red pill versus the blue pill uh, matrix analogy. People won't really have any excuse because so many of us spend half our time plonked in front of a computer or a TV or whatever it is anyway. So if this information suddenly is plonked in front of people who are doing that, you have very little excuse for not being aware anymore. 
Well, actually, uh, one of the, the great things, just a quick aside, uh, is that the uh, technology has reached the point now where this may be an internet station, but you can watch it in your front room on your television. Yeah. Um, and uh, we want to keep it on the internet for a simple reason. Uh, well, two simple reasons. One, uh, getting it onto satellite or something like that. Cable is, is so unbelievably expensive. But the other thing is, uh, once you start to get involved in those mainstream things, you come under Ofcom and the regulators that are dictating what you can and cannot say. Mm. So so we don't want to go there. But But because of the technological situation people can sit in their front rooms and watch the people's voice now on their televisions but uh, information that's the key because you know this is not going to be a station in which um, people are going to uh, sit there saying you must believe this and all that stuff it's going to be a vehicle for communicating information the star of the people's voice well there's two stars a a the, the public um, and two and the, I think the key one, because everything comes from this, is information. You know, it's not you. You don't have to say to people, um, uh, "You must believe this. You must believe that. You must believe me when I say this is how it is." All you've got to do is to have the free flow of information. Um, take the censorship away, so all information is available to people, and the information of uh, itself is the power that. Um, gets people to look at the world in a different way because it makes so much sense to them. Mm. You see, um, if you come from the mainstream media's point of view and the mainstream scientific point of view, then homeopathy is impossible. It's ridiculous. You cannot heal or have any effect on anything if you... Um, dilute a substance to the point where there's no substance left, right? So from that point of view, which is Stone Age science's point of view, and the education system's point of view, therefore the media's point of view, the journalists that have come through it, then homeopathy is ridiculous. We've got a lady who's the kind of the, 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 the head medical advisor to the present government who is saying homeopathy is uh, uh, basically a nonsense and it should not be on available in any way on the NHS. Um, and, and they're saying this because they're ignorant. They don't know what they're talking about. What uh, happens in homeopathy, and this is where, you know, when, once you explain it, so this is what the People's Voice will be doing, just explaining through information uh, how something is not the nonsense that you think it is, is one thing the People's Voice will be doing. When you, um, well, let me, let me tell it, uh, put it this way, it'll, it'll make it simpler. Um, at the um, Aerospace Institute in Stuttgart, Germany, they developed a way of photographing information in water droplets. And if you go on the uh, internet, on YouTube, and you put in things like water has a memory, Aerospace Institute Stuttgart, you'll see about a four or five minute video where they're showing their experiments. And what they did with one um, is they put, they got a big um, tank of water and they put uh, a flower in the water, just, just a flower, and they left it in the water for a bit. And then they took it out. And then they started photographing the information in individual droplets within that tank. Every single droplet had the flower's information in it. You could see the flower in the inf uh, uh, information. Incredible. What, what they then did was they got another tank of water and they invited people from the local community to come up to take part in this experiment. And what they did, they give everybody, each one, a dish and they asked them to go and take four droplets out of the big tank and put it in their dish. And then they photographed the the information in the droplets and what they found was that all four uh, all groups of four droplets in other words each individual's droplets in the dish were all different but each four droplets within the same dish were virtually identical wow so in the, in the process of just taking a droplet from the tank and putting it in the dish that water had absorbed the unique energy field of the person doing it. Here we go again, uh, John. We're back to back to energy. Yeah. So when we look at um, the the fact that 
uh, water is an, an energetic field and uh, a flower is an energetic field. On the level of the energetic field, the field of one merges and is absorbed by the field of the other. Again, we see the water droplet and we see the, 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 the flower, but they're just the holographic projections of information. It's at that information level that the mer they merge. And thus, in homeopathy, when they put the substance in the water... As they dilute it and dilute it and dilute it until there's apparently no substance left, what's left in that water is the information from the substance which affects the information field of the human body being treated and it's at the energetic information level that homeopathy interacts with the body. Now because, staggering as it may seem to any even slight level of awakened uh, people that even now mainstream medicine does not acknowledge the energetic nature of the body and thus to it um, and mainstream science and mainstream media homeopathy is ridiculous because you can't dilute that much because it'll have no effect whereas when it's explained and explained in, in relation to how reality really works, mm. suddenly homeopathy becomes perfectly logical. And that's what I mean by information is the star and information will do the job. All we have to do is communicate it credibly and accurately. And I must say, David, I'm very much looking forward to that communication. I know you're slightly pushed for time. So uh, give us the details, the people's voice and the perception deception. When can we expect to see the light of day with both? Well, um, definitely with um, the uh, perception deception is at the printers now. So we're looking uh, at the end of October, uh, early November being in circulation. Um, and the people's voice, of course, we're still working and we're still overcoming challenges and we're still seeing what this is but, but we are still on course to go on air. Um, we're planning on November the 18th. Um, and uh, so, you know, when you think that we're fast heading uh, into September, uh, it ain't long, ago, long to go. And um, we, um, we have a lot of work to do, but... We see no reason at this time at all why that should not happen on November the 18th. And like I say, um, the, uh, the, the vision is to go 24 hours. Um, I certainly have the, I tell you, I've been working on the programming and, and contacting people around the world, as you know, because I contacted you. Yep. Um, and, and getting all this various spectrum of different programs and others are being suggested all the time as the, this creativity is tapped into. Um, and so I could fill 24 hours of programming now, um, but the, the, it's whether we have the funds and whether we have enough people like editors um, to get that program to, those programs to air. That's, that's the only question. But certainly on November the 18th, unless you know, the world falls apart, we will be going on air with something very, very substantial. Um, and from that will come the vision. Well, I don't think the world is going to fall apart anytime soon if we can do anything about it. Quite uh, the opposite. We're going to put it together again. Now you said it. I have the power. You have the power. We have the power. David Icke, it's been great having you on Alchemy Radio. The next time we speak on this show, it will be as part of the People's Voice, which is uh, it's hugely exciting. And uh, thank you for joining me. Enjoy the challenges that lie ahead over the next few months. And of course, davidike.com is the website for those who want to check out more information. Have you a final message for the listeners of Alchemy Radio, David? Well, I would just say this, you know, when I started out, um, not being able to fill a phone box with people interested in this stuff, that's a challenge. Um, <laughs> and, you know, when I see people, um, when I, I go out or go down the store or whatever, and I, I, I see you know, people looking after people in wheelchairs in terrible states where everything has to be done for them 24-7, and there's, there's the, the, the people, the carers are there, and they're, they're, they're there 24 7 24 7 day after day looking after these people because the, the uh, you know with little help from the state that's pressure that's that's a challenge um no matter how challenging what i'm doing and what we're doing becomes it ain't as challenging as that and and e even in the in the level of the subject that i work in and what i'm doing nothing will be a greater challenge than 
being ridiculed wherever you go and people not wanting to know what anything you're saying basically or the vast majority not wanting to know um uh, compare that with the challenge of coping with the interest and making something happen on on this wave of support and interest that's a piece of cake compared with the, with what used to happen so yes there are challenges but uh you know nothing like they used to be <laughs>